I am a big fan of Evangelion. I've been looking for a game with unusual story like that series. And I finally found one. The game I was looking for was Xenogears. I'm not saying that Xenogears has the same story as Evangelion. It's different. It's just that it has a similar theme. So, what is Xenogears? It's basically an RPG game with giant robots. With the story about mankind, gods, the meaning of existence, etc. This game defied what other games usually have or do, especially a freaking RPG game. From the story, gameplay, details. After watching a few scenes that you don't quite understand yet, now we begin in the village of Lahan. The environment of Xenogears is unique because it is in 3D with isometric angle, but the characters are sprites. There is something interesting about the basic control. You can jump in here. Yes, you can jump. Normally, you cannot do that in other JRPG games. I've seen a jumping sequence, but usually automatic. I think this was intended so that there would be more action during exploration, like jumping to get across. It becomes annoying though once you fall off and have to start over. Alright, let's talk about the main character of this game. I like how the main character is not the typical white boy with a boring, spiky, pineapple hair wielding a sword. The main character is a martial artist, using only bare hands, similar to a monk class in Final Fantasy. So, basically, your friend is getting married tomorrow, and Alice secretly has a feeling for you. That gave me a bad feeling, especially when one of the villagers asks you, whether you like the village or not. After talking with Alice, now we have to go to the doctor. But first, I have to say that I really like the environment of Xenogears. Look inside every single building you can find. You can see furniture. You can see stuff on the wall, which is part of the background. You can see animals outside. Now let's talk about the battle system of this game. You can attack with triangle, square, or X for basic attack. Either is the magic of this game. Interestingly, Chrono Cross has a similar basic attack with this game. Weak, strong, and fierce attack. Is it based on this game? You can perform that blow in this game. That blow is basically a technique that you can perform by using a certain combination of buttons. You can see these combinations on your status screen. You can learn that blow by using basic tech, but you also need to reach a certain level to learn this. You can also do a combo of dead blows by spending your AP. You can get AP easily by only using the triangle attack. But to be honest with you, I didn't need to use combo at all. The only time where I need it is during that Margie rescue mission against 
Francis. Death Blow is similar to Blitz in Final Fantasy VI, but we have more Death Blows here, and almost all characters have Death Blow, unlike Blitz. But regardless, it's really cool to see all of these Death Blows. It gives each character a unique, dynamic, and cool attack. It's really fun using them. This is Dr. Uzuki's house. You can already tell what kind of person he is just by looking at his house. A quirky doctor, a quirky inventor with a great wisdom. Also, I like how there are chicken here. It shows a neat detail about how the doctor live, what does he eat, how his family make money. There is another unusual thing in this game. Apparently, you can gain weight. After a nice dinner with doctor's family, you can see that you gained weight by checking the status screen. I have no idea if it means anything. I think agility stat is your indicator of speed. But it's a cool detail regardless. Funny that you can become overweight in this game. On your way to the village, suddenly giant robots appear. Of course, we have to defend the village. Now it's time to talk about how gear battle works. And by the way, there are a few anime scenes in this game. When you see one, that means it's an important scene. Yeah, like this creepy child. The control for gear is a bit different, but it's simpler. You can use Weak, strong, and fierce attack. Gear has its own death blow. You have to raise its attack level by attacking with any button. It will be displayed on the screen. Let's say that you want to use a level 3 death blow. Then you have to attack 3 times. Then you can use level 3 death blow in the next turn. I'd say that Level 1 death blow will deal more damage. It takes a while to build up your attack level for the level 3 death blow. This is a big flaw in the gear battle, but I think there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that later. Your character also need to learn certain death blow in order for them to use the gear death blow. Your action is limited by fuel in gear battle. Stronger attacks require more fuel. But don't worry, you can charge your fuel with the charge option. And you can charge more fuel with higher attack level. Booster is similar to haste magic in Final Fantasy. It increases your action speed. But you will also drain a lot of fuel in return. You can use either during gear battle as well. Take a look at this awesome Kamehameha. After the battle, you will get to see why Sino Gears is awesome. One of the reason is that this game is not afraid to kill some important characters. We went out of control killed some people and destroyed the entire village. Dan is angry with you because we killed her sister. Faye immediately got a heavy burden right at the start. This will be important later. Now we have no choice but to leave the village. Later in the forest, a female soldier will hold you at gunpoint. Their interaction throughout this entire section is quite interesting. She calls you Lamp. 
the surface dwellers. After the event of Lahan, Faye just doesn't care if she shoot him. He's different from other protagonists. Other protagonists will probably stay silent, try to reason with her, or simply shock. Right after that, she got smacked by something. Of course, we have to save our chickadee. Believe it or not, this is a boss fight. Well, at least that's what people say. It's kind of like a normal fight. Anyway, we saved her and we get to understand each other. Now, the game has a few mistranslations, especially when it comes to names. Her name is actually Eleheim van Houten. It's interesting that she has a Dutch surname. So we agreed to work together to get out of the forest and we get to play as Ellie. Ellie here as a playable character is quite interesting. She is basically the mage of this game, but she is an anomaly among all mages in games. She has a weird weapon of choice. You saw her use a gun before, but during actual gameplay, she uses a rod instead. But this rod only increases her attack instead of her magic, I mean either stuff. I guess this is because she has death blow as well, but I thought that she would use an either gun. But I guess there is another character with that weapon. Also, what's even weirder about her weapon is that she uses it like a sword. So, Faye told her what happened in Lahan, and she calls him a coward. It turns out that she was the one who brought the gear. And then, suddenly, a giant T-Rex appeared. Of course, we can't just punch the T-Rex into submission. We have to use the gear. This is another thing that I love from gear battles in Sino Gears. We got 3D model for gear battles and we're punching a freaking T-Rex using a giant robot with our kung fu. After resting for a bit, we get to learn who she is and what she did. Faye and Ellie have an interesting dynamic. She feels bad because she was the one who brought the gear. It's fair enough. I like how Faye didn't blame her. Either. It was unavoidable. Unfortunately, the gear is broken and we have to repair it. Well, here we are. This is Ava. You can learn some interesting stuff from people, like why Ava is important for Gabler and such. Later on, you will finally get to see the man who controls that black gears in Lahan. He is called Graf. Now, this guy will constantly shove his dick at you throughout the entire game, but you will know why later on. After this, you'll get caught by Ava, because they wanted our gear as well. But fortunately, sand pirates will come and shoot at the transport, which allow you to escape amidst the chaos. But unfortunately, the leader of the sand pirates is an ass. He didn't listen and we get trapped together. So we agreed to work together to escape and here we are. This is the first time you get to control a gear when exploring. And when you decided to come out of the gear, you will see that you are just a tiny tiny dust compared to your gear. Now Let's take a moment to appreciate the details of the screen. 
it's as if we were inside the gear itself. And on top of that, there is another cool detail, where if your accuracy get lowered by those jellyfish, a warning will appear that says, camera damaged. So the name of our friend here is Bart, and he totally get annoyed here. I really like the little banter between them. It's not only hilarious, but it's also important to build the dynamic between characters in this game. Deep inside the cave lives an old man who sells gear parts. This is it, it's time to upgrade our gears. You can restore your fuel, upgrade your engine, armor, and frame. You can also buy some parts. I don't know why there is something so exciting about upgrading your gears. It feels like you own the gears. Upgrading can be expensive, but it definitely pays off after beating some enemy gears with your new upgrades. After defeating a difficult boss, now you get to explore the pirate sand vehicle Big Brazil. Aside from talking with people, buying gear parts, you can measure your weight here. It's very interesting. Perhaps you'll get a different reaction if you let Yui cook that bird egg. Perhaps you will get a different reaction if you let Yui cook that bird egg that you found. But we don't do that here. I like keeping my weight ideal. It was revealed that our pirate guy is the next successor of Fatima Kingdom or something. And his name is Bartholomew? Wait, seriously? Now, basically, we have to rescue Margie from the shotgun before trying to assault them. But when Bart asked Faye to help him, he refused. This reminds me of the scene where Shinji refused to pilot Evangelion. When Bart talked to Faye later, it reminds me of Misato talking to Shinji. It's your choice to fight. Also, you will see another touching scene where Bart talked to himself. I really like seeing a character having a moment like this. It shows what kind of person they are, and how strong and kind they are. After thinking about it for a while, Faye finally decided to help. But for now, it's time for some training art, I guess. Sino Gears succeed at making the gears dangerous. Normally, you can defeat giant robots like this easily in other games, but not here. And what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this. Mmm, take that stupid human. Just look at them, struggling to even leave a dent on our armor, yet we just stomp on them. So savage. This game has no mercy at all. Shortly after, Gabler will take a chance and attack you to take the gears. It's interesting that you can control our gear helper as well. Shitan will finally have a gear of his own. Him though. Pei decided to help after thinking about it for a while. Seeing kids around and the chaos caused by Gabler. Now, let's skip over to the next section, Bladderfic. Before we talk about the mission, let's talk about the city itself first. There are so many stuff here. Take a look at vendors around. I really like those merchants offering their wares. I love a lively atmosphere like this. You can eat inside this restaurant, but you'll gain weight by eating here. 
it's pretty cool i guess there is another fun thing you can do here when you talk to this person some kids will steal some stuff here if you follow them you can find them hiding you can give some money and they will open their own shop in the future selling meats that can be useful for you later it's such a nice addition the game is teaching you to share some of your stuff to others back to the rescue mission basically Faye need to participate in the tournament to get attention of guards while bard need to sneak to the castle you will also meet Dan, who is still angry with you you can get a wedding dress by letting him hit your ball sack a few times what interests me most about this stealth mission is that you can take a peek from the door this is not even an action game you can see the passion the developer put into this game now it's time for actual boss fight the man with a blade is Ramses and that woman is Mia. Her name is actually Mia. There is a cool secret about her name, but yeah, let's talk about the battle first. It's interesting that you can see Marchi supporting us, but we cannot control her. The same thing with Mia. She supports Ramses. Alright, moving on. You will bump into a familiar face here. Bart did not trust her at all because she is a gabbler. Now, I've been thinking about this for a while but there is something different about the dialogues in this game. The dialogues feels natural compared to other JRPG games or perhaps any games I played. I'm not really sure what it is, but like how Bart is about to knock Ellie, how he insists on not trusting her, almost every word feels natural. What he said is just like how a real person will react if their comrade knows an enemy. Even the dialogues between Faye and Ellie throughout the entire game also feels natural somehow. Sometimes people kinda discredit the mistranslation of old games. I think people need to observe each words of every text carefully. So, in the next section, we are going to strike at our enemy now since we saved Margie. One thing to note, it's cool that the soldier gears have an overworld sprite. Well, anyway, we are fighting Ellie now. She hasn't made up her mind yet, and she's using some kind of drugs to fight us. So, the name of her gear is Fierge, which means virgin in French. Some say that her gear has a weak physical attack, but her attack is still savage. I mean, she kicked our mechanical winner. It's interesting that we get to fight the main female character. At this point, she didn't know all the secrets behind Solaris. This scene will be important later. So basically, the plan failed. Gabler and Shakhan knew what we were planning. But Faye will awaken once again, and some cool scenes will ensue. I know from the beginning how Faye destroyed Rahan. He has another persona inside him, and awakens when he is angry. Basically, this is one of that anime moment. Wow. 
Wow, what an intimidating entrance. Ramses will try to fight the demon. Now, if you are wondering how strong we are, then take a look at this. Dang, he just ripped off the right arm of Ramses' gear, held him in the air, and slammed his head to the ground. It's, it's just like a toy. I really love the brutality of this game. Unfortunately, you will be sent to Kislev prison after this, and you have to prove yourself to escape by winning the gear competition. The competition is nothing like the turn-based battle. It's an actual game on its own. You get to actually control your gear and fight in real action. It's pretty cool. I heard that the speed of the movement is different if you play on emulator. This fight was rigged and your gear explodes. After the fight, an interesting scene will answer. After this, you will see a scene where that bastard is laughing inside the sword. But then, Something interesting will happen. A creature with a red vision will chase and kill those two. It's interesting to see this scene in this perspective. It's giving me a horror vibe. The game is suddenly becoming a silent hill. Eventually, Rico is becoming suspicious of us because five people died down there. And only truly strong person like Faye can murder them. It's time to prove our innocence, I guess. Down there, you will see a glimpse of a creature with a green vision. Apparently, this creature will follow the sound of a bell. This bell will be important later, but now, isn't there something strange about this? The creature who killed those two had a red vision, not green. And this creature actually avoid you unless if you ring the bell. Unlike the one who killed those innocent people, it has an aggressive movement and it just straight up jump on them. And on top of that, the creature with a green vision has a different breathing pattern as well. And that means Faye was the one who murdered those people. Now, as we try to escape, Gabler came, and they are serious this time. They are planning to eradicate the entire Kislev by bombing the nuclear reactor. It's interesting how some minor characters are given a portrait like this. Normally, only a truly important person will be given a portrait. A portrait gives you an idea of how that character actually looks like behind the sprite. It's an important identity for characters in old games. It's nice that Xenogears has so many portraits. Once again, we meet Ellie. The talk about freedom here is quite interesting. She lives in Solaris, and so is her family. It's difficult to simply flee. Who knows what will happen to her family? And if she is branded as a traitor, perhaps she won't be able to return. And later, when we get to see what Solaris looks like, Everything will be clear.
is a fair reason. Faye will show her the burning town and try to convince her. Ellie will join the party at this point. So, the next section involves escaping Kislev and stealing their plane. But first, I have to say that they have a lax security. We have a freaking gabbler officer running with us. Almost none of these soldiers even cared. Once again, Bart mistook us as an enemy and shot our plane. We crash landed in the middle of the sea and separated. Rico's reaction when finding out who shot the plane is hilarious. He just beat the crap out of him. Now, back to Faye and Ellie. I have to say that I really enjoy every single scene of these two. The music made a scene like this even more powerful. I have to say that there is no music that I don't like in this game. Every single music is just perfect especially the battle music and the emotional cutscene music. Interestingly, it seems like you cannot eat any fish in here. I have yet to see anyone fishing in this game. It's not edible, I guess. I wonder why is that. Well, regardless, it's cute that she shared some of her ration. Anyway, it turns out that there is a giant salvage ship with the size of a city. Yay, we are safe. There is not much to say about this place. You can say that this is the place of the man of the sea gathered. Oh, I guess there is also a frustrating card mini game here. You have to win this to get some valuable items. I have to say that some people here are genuinely funny. Like this dude right here. If you need something, talk to my stupid son. Wow. And then there is this one salty doctor who is tired of his job. Don't ever come back. Wow! Once again, Gabler will try to bite your ass again. This time, we see a new face though. She usually closed her eyes, not because she is blind, but because that is the way she controls her massive either power. Pretty cool. Too bad that she is the villain. I would love if she joined our party instead. She's cool and cute. Dominia took the chance during that battle and dragged Ellie back because she betrayed Gabler of hers. But then, Mia came and saved her. Now, I don't want to talk much about Mia because she is not only very complicated, but also scary and mysterious. She has a strong presence. She is right about Dominia having a personal prejudice against Ellie. And on top of that, she can just paralyze Dominia and brainwash Ellie by just staring at them. Now, there is a lot of stuff happening after this, like Faye getting unconscious after being punched by Ramses. But for now, let's talk about this orphanage for a second. If you bring Rico to this place and talk to this kid, he will recognize the bell that you used to defeat that monster in kid's life. He said that this is his father's bell. Now, human experimentation is nothing new. You see demi-humans like Rico and others. Do you know what that means? 
the thing that we killed in that server that was his father. Wow, what a game. Next up, Billy will help Faye and we will help him in return. You will see his past, his mother killed by reapers and stuff. I was surprised when he said that he was Billy himself as a playable character is unique. First of all, he is the real healer of this game. Doctor and Faye can heal, but only a single target. But unlike other healer you know, he uses a gun. Yes, finally a character with a gun. Now, he has three guns. His weak attack is a handgun. His fierce attack is a heavy gun. While his strong attack is an ether gun. Each gun has its own ammo and you need to restock them. But the ether gun has unlimited ammo. His gear also works the same way. It has its own guns and ammo. Also, Billy has cool death blows. Take a look at this. Adam's apple. Wow, so cool. So now, we finally stepped our foot on Ethos. You will be welcomed by corpses of people. The developer of this game truly going all out with deaths in this game. Even religious members are killed. You will meet the assassins who were responsible for this massacre. They are cruel and powerful. Just look at this person. He is just a normal human. And then, in a matter of seconds, he is just a pile of flesh and bones. You will find out what Ethos really is. Yeah, subsidiary of Solaris, excavation and people transported to Solaris and stuff. You will also find other stuff like experimentation later. Alright, now let's talk about Shafat. This is the floating UFO that you saw before and it turns out to be a giant city. You can learn a lot of stuff here by talking to people like the legend of Genesis and stuff. I like talking with people here, just like talking with people on the surface. Just like what I said before, I really like the natural dialogue of this game. After talking with the Queen of Shafat, an intruder managed to infiltrate the security and now we have to find the intruder. We have a new lolly, I mean a new party member here, Maria Balthasar. Maria is actually closer to mages in other typical JRPG games. She doesn't have a character death blow. The kind of magic she used is different. I mean, she just summoned her gear. Wow. How is that possible? We are literally inside a room. So, the intruder is Dominion. She is going to talk about Maria's gear. The name of Maria's gear is Sipsin which is 17 in German, it's a typo I guess, but what is interesting about her gear is that she is riding her gear outside, it seems like she control it like how you control an Omni gear, but a little different. So Maria's father basically made an ultimate gear by combining human and gear. But then she said something interesting. She was 
going to talk about the nerve circuit of Sipson. The way she said that, as if it contains the brain of Maria's mother. This reminds me of how Evangelions contain the soul of the pilot's mother. Well, that is if my theory is true. But if it's true, then that's scary. Later on, Gabler once again came and they have a new gear that can cripple your gears. When everyone is unable to do anything, our stuffed animal friend here decided to fight. You might be wondering, how the hell is she gonna fight? You've seen her species around the town before, but she is different. She can grow into the size of a gear. I remember people around the town talked about an ancient garden, and I think this is what people mean. It's really funny seeing a kid's cartoon or anime creature fighting a giant robot in a dark game. And also, she's invincible. After finishing Shafat, all of your characters will get their potential unlocked by training with Gaspar. Yeah, a training art for everyone. This means everyone will get more dead blows, and these dead blows are cooler. Everyone become a super saiyan. So, the next section involves getting omni gears and destroying gates. But let's just skip over to Solaris. Finally, we get to see Solaris itself. The interior design of Solaris gives you the vibe of Death Star from Star Wars. It is as you expected. Everything is futuristic compared to the surface. You will see surface dwellers here, worked to death. This is the main district of Solaris, and this is not like what you think. This place has a silly carnival music, symbolizing Solarian people having a fun and happy life every day, while also being ignorant to the truth behind the Solaris itself. It's a really clever decision to use this music. I expected an elegant music for a place of high-class citizens like this. After getting into trouble with security drones, now we finally get to see Ellie's house. Yay! She has a big house indeed, and she also has a shower inside a bedroom. Wait, what? Well, you get to learn about the Based on what she said, it seems like Gabler is based on a certain party of Germany. Well, you know, the master race and those stuff. And she is different from others because her mom is a land dweller. Now, it's our turn to take a shower. She said that she is adjusting the temperature, but I'm sure she saw our junk. She's been standing there for quite long. We definitely didn't see anything before. All jokes aside, I really like the way the writer built their relationship. They have many sweet moments, even in disc too. They get to laugh together. They even get to eat. A nice meal together later. Wait, uh, uh, if you would like to know what that food made of and why Sheaton didn't eat, well, take a look yourself.
Yeah, those were human meats. This is the point where I realized that Xenogears is different from other JRPG games, and why there is almost nothing you can compare to. This is truly the scariest and also my favorite moment in the game. This is also where I began to question Satan's action. I've been holding back to discuss about Satan since the beginning. I feel like this is where we should look deeper at this character. It's obvious that Satan was hiding something in the beginning. The way he talked to Faye was suspicious. And then you also see a scene of him talking with the Emperor. After this, Shitan will deceive you. But he did that to talk with it, the other side of Faye. It should not be a surprise when he did that. Although, I have to admit that the way he tried to awaken it is quite harsh. He provoked Fei by basically calling him weak. So, who is this guy? Well, this guy used to be a Solarian. His name is Hyuga. He was also a soldier, but he began to question the moral of Solaris later on. After having escaped, the grip of Solaris, he eventually fell in love with Yui and they get married. He eventually learned the martial art style of Yui's grandpa as well. And with all of that in mind, is he a bad guy? No, he is not. He is the one who supports Fei and the rest of the gang throughout the entire game. He always want the best for everyone. Remember when Rico was suspicious of Fei? He didn't say anything. Remember when Jesse was pointing his gun at Ellie? He stopped him. Remember when Ellie was brainwashed and almost blew up Yggdrasil? He resolved that quickly and revealed what happened to Ellie. He is also willing to help Bart to rescue Margie as well. But I have a mixed feeling about Sheaton. I have issues with his view on morality and how smart he is. Before going to Solaris, there was a scene of him talking to Yui. It was revealed that he had a mean-looking sword this entire time. Why didn't he use it? This would have been useful back then. He was holding back. He didn't want to kill. Yet he let Faye and Ellie ate that meat. I think Shitan wanted to trigger the awakening of Eid, which is why he let Faye eat that meat. That's why Faye got some flashback of his past, going through experiment. And for Ellie, I think he wanted Ellie to understand why she need to fight and stop Solaris. But it's still wrong to do that. He could have dragged them and showed them. Ellie probably has been eating that the whole time. But Faye lived in a farm like Lahan. He assumed that meat comes from chicken and cows. He is just like us. We need to put ourselves in Faye's place in order to understand. Shitan is kinda scary sometimes. He is an articulate person. He is able to steer a conversation to place him in a safe spot. He knows when to avoid danger and how to infiltrate an enemy territory. He is the most ambiguous man ever. He is the sus man. Well, all of that aside, he is one of the most 
valuable member. He can heal, apply elemental resistance, and he is very strong, especially when he get to use his mean looking sword. Now back to exploring. It's really cool and scary that the thing we used to save the game is all part of Solaris plan to gather information. Just take a look at the spare memory cubes. On your way to escape Solaris, your old friend Hammer will betray you and tries to take Ellie to Krellion. He hates being weak or something. I have to say that I did not expect him to betray us. Back in Kislev, he was like a typical merchant. He was like, hey, take a look. I have some good shit right here with a fair price. I thought that this guy would simply follow Faye and the group. Normally, a merchant will stay neutral or pick the good or winning side. Ellie's mother will step in to let him release Ellie. I have seen a moment like this in other games or anime. I truly expected him to run away after releasing Ellie, or he will simply realize that maybe he just need to get a hold of himself and he can be brave enough like Ellie's mother. But then I forgot that I was playing Sino Gears. Wow, it's giving me chills. Not even Ellie's mother is safe. Ellie's father will also sacrifice himself after this. And it will once again awaken. But now he just destroyed the entire Solaris. And that is the end of disc 1. Now we are going to talk about the disc 2. This one is famous for having a shift in style of gameplay because the game becomes a visual novel, less of action and exploration but more on reading text. Some people say that this is all because of insufficient budget, yet some people say that this is because of time constraint. I have to say that it's not that bad. All of your questions from disc 1 will be answered. Like why the Hallegraph saved Ellie and why he didn't attack her during our fight. The whole reincarnation of Faye and Ellie, nanomachines, the goal of Krellian, Mia, and stuff. But I would like to take a look back at Solaris for a moment. I don't think that Solaris was supposed to be destroyed just like that. We haven't even explored every single corner of that place. It was too fast. We haven't seen Jugend, the place that Ellie and other Gabler mentioned. Now, think about it for a second. It was really strange that one of the mates in Ellie's house gave you her ultimate weapon, the Psycho Rod. Why would a maid have it? Ellie had a strong weapon from the start, but she didn't just take it. Or are they just a psycho? Did they buy it from the store? I think you were supposed to get that from Jugend in some way. Especially for a weapon with scary name like that. Perhaps you were supposed to fight someone there and that person will drop this after you punch them really hard. I think this is the point where the developer is running out of time or budget. Now, I don't think I need to explain everything about the story. It's best to read it directly from the game itself. And other people have already explained the lore and the story with great detail. 
You can also read Perfect Works for more information. It's basically the revival of God. We need to destroy the God to prevent the end of humanity and rescue Ellie. Yeah, basically just punch all the bad guy with your gear. You know, this game doesn't have many exploration. Even later, when you get to explore, there is not much you can do. This is quite disappointing. I also wish that we get to see more of the remaining gabler. Did they finally work together? Later, you will meet Hammer again. This time, you have to fight him. But after you beat him, Ellie will leave the party member forever. I don't think this is what's supposed to happen. She has her own Omni gear. It has such a cool design. It suspiciously resembles Fjerd. I wish we get to play as this gear, Regulus, in this battle instead of automatic. Also, it appears that Maria and Emeralda were supposed to get an omni gear of their own which explain why maria's gear is different from others they changed her gear to be more like an omni gear that means there were supposed to be another two anima relics and more explorations i wish they were playable but hey at least we get to see another sweet scene Faye didn't want Ellie to fight anymore, but he was kinda harsh to her. I really like the way he apologized to her. Despite being a supposedly dense protagonist, he has a way with words. And unlike other dense characters, he actually won. Well, you know what happened right there. Now, moving on. The past of Ramses will be revealed here, and he will kill Mia. But when she dies, she awakens once again inside Ellie. She has the ability to awaken in any woman. You know, I kinda see this coming long before this. Her name is Mia Hawa. Hawa means Eve in Arabic. So it all makes sense, huh? There is something that I don't understand about her. We fought her before this, and it was maybe the only time we get to fight her in gear battles. But did you notice something? This is not the gear that she used before, but this is the gear that we saw in Solaris when we were looking for a way out. You saw her using a different gear before. This gear is C1 Fierge, seemingly a prototype of Ellie's gear. I think you were supposed to fight her in this gear, near the end of this one, instead of fighting her on foot. Well, I don't know. Mia was fight as an Executioner was kinda underwhelming. Or maybe you were supposed to fight her in early disc too. I love prototype robots. They are usually super strong and they are cool. In Perfect Works, it was mentioned that this gear has super arrows and even stronger arrows than what Ellie have. I can imagine both of them having a duel. It's a shame that we never get to fight her. Alright, now let's talk about the reincarnation for a bit. It was quite obvious from the start that Faye and Ellie are the reincarnation of people who lives before them. Ellie died again and again. The previous contacts failed again and again. But Despite that, this time we are not following the same thing. 
So Faye's mother awakened as Mia and experimented on Faye whenever his father isn't there. This and the death of his mother traumatized him and his personality was split. But Faye managed to overcome his past. Faye showed the coward that their mother protected them. Their mother is still there and convinced is Eid that they can make use of their power to save others. After a long scene with wave existence or something, now we got the ultimate gear, the Sino Gears, the namesake of the game. This kinda reminds me of when Shinji rejected the human instrumentality. On top of that, Fei has a bad father as well. He just doesn't care until it was too late. Now, moving on to Deus. But before that, I would like to say something about the gears. The gear battles in this game are strangely balanced and realistic. You have an even stats with your enemy. I'm not really sure how to explain this but let's say that you deal high damage to your opponent. They deal high damage to you. If you have 10k HP, they have around the same HP, maybe just a little bit higher. Also, those Kebler soldiers that keep pestering you, you know, the one with the portrait. Yeah, remember them? Whenever they return, they didn't get magically powerful. You beat them easily. I think Alice feared is the only broken gear in the game. Seriously, she can just dish out an extreme damage with her arrows. I guess that's why they didn't let us to play as Ellie for long. And speaking of gear, I really didn't have any reason to use level 2 or level 3 death blow. You are wasting more turns to do a higher level death blow. You can simply use a death blower gear part for a better level 1 death blow. I think they were supposed to implement a gear part that let you start at level 2 or level 3 death blow. But I guess that idea was scrapped or never there because of time constraint. I hope this game will get a remake someday. Back then, a lot of people were talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake, but never this game. This game deserves a remake. It has an amazing story. It has a lot of gears with 3D model. It has anime scenes. This game has everything. This game has a big potential. Well, for now. The closest thing to a remake is the collaboration of Sino Gears and Final Fantasy Brave x -Fears. Yeah, one step I guess. It's nice to see the updated sprites and a nice cut-in attack. Luckily, I got all of them. Before we talk about Deus, I have to say that whenever I try to take a look at this game, this game gives me chill, I don't know why, the story, the enemy, the alien, and the music. This game has an eerie atmosphere, but funny enough, the boss battle music actually balances out the eerie fight. Like Deus battle music for example, it sounds like a final boss battle from a tame JRPG game. After this, you are going to fight Krellian. You will learn what he really wanted to do. Oh, and also, I forgot to mention that you can use infinity level death blow by staying at level 3 and keep using normal attack until it appears.
It's a really cool and satisfying way to end the game. And also, I forgot to mention that unlike the previous reincarnation, Ellie didn't die this time. She is saved for real, yay! This game is phenomenal. Just the idea of a PlayStation 1 game with anime scene like this is just beautiful. Especially that this game has an amazing story and gameplay. Honestly, the entire game feels like a combination of an anime and a game. It's huge. And when I said huge, it really is. This was all just an episode 5. I wonder what happened to the Sino Gear itself. It's the only active gear. Anyway, I highly recommend to play this game.